the agenda at this time. I'm going to ask that uh, we recognize our candidates, Tammy Green for Treasurer, Calhoun County, and also Jerry Govan, House of House Representative for District 93. And we're going mm -hmm. to allow them at this time if they would like to have something that they'd like to say to our citizens or the town to do so at this time. My name is Tammy Milligan Green, and I am a candidate for the Calhoun County Treasurer's Office seat. Currently, I am the delinquent tax collector for Calhoun County. I've been doing that for eight years. Prior to that, I did work in the treasurer's office for six years. And before I became a member of Calhoun County, I worked for bb t for 11 years. I'm a long, like, lifelong resident of Calhoun County, born here, raised here, went to school here, currently work here. Um, my reason for running for Calvin County Treasurer is to continue helping the taxpayers of Calvin County. That's just something, I don't know, it's just something I love doing. So I want to continue doing that. I want to thank everybody for all the support, love, and prayers I've received and continue to receive from everyone. Um, November 5th is election day, but they will have early voting October 21st through November 2nd. So I'm just wanting to introduce myself and when people see the green signs, they'll know who that is. Thank you. I'm former representative, state representative Jerry Govan, and I'm a candidate for House District number 93. The redrawn House District in our state uh, uh, that uh, comes from the redistricting that was done a couple of years ago. Uh, we are now looking at new districts, not only for the House, representing you in the State House of South Carolina, but you're also looking at redrawn districts for the South Carolina Senate. Uh, I'm offering you as a candidate for the South Carolina House, uh, since uh, the current representative, Senator, uh, Representative Ott, is now uh, running for South Carolina State Senate. And so uh, my reason for running is, is pretty simple. We need to ensure that we have continuity and experience leadership in the South Carolina House. This region of the state, uh, Calhoun, Orangeburg, and uh, Lexington counties, has always enjoyed in the State General Assembly uh, individuals who have had the experience and been serving in position for some time. And as you all know, there's something to be said about experience in terms of being able to effectively get things done. The other reason uh, that I'm running is that there are important issues, and the reason why I want to come before this distinguished council and mayor is a pleasure to see you again. We've had a chance to work together for a number of years. Uh, I've served for over 30 years in the House, and prior to that, uh, I served uh, as the first rural intern for the South Carolina Conference of uh, Black Mayors many, many years ago. So I'm familiar with local government. I've worked locally uh, with uh, the city of Orangeburg and also Orangeburg County in several capacities and the school district. But uh, the reason why I wanted to come here tonight because I think it's important that we develop a relationship. I'm not assuming that, that uh, we're going to be successful in November. I'm prayerful that we will. But that does not mean my tenure of service and my experience over the years, if I can be of help and use, usefulness to you, uh, I want to share that with you as well. And, and finally, I want to just say this. Um, one of the most pressing concerns that we have in this region of the state is that South Carolina is going through, is one of the fastest growing states uh, in the country. Matter of fact, our growth uh, leads us, uh, one of the leading, is second or third in the nation. And as a result of that, this corridor of South Carolina, in terms of that the interstate and other highways that run through the Orangeburg, Calhoun, and Lexington areas is the most important region of the state right now. And we're experiencing something called fast growth. And I would love to work with this, uh, this town, this county, along with the other two areas uh, to ensure uh, that all citizens benefit from that growth, that we're able to have and build and have the capacity to adjust to that because if you don't do that and have what you call fast growth uh, without smart growth, then of course it can cause undue pressure and burdens on your infrastructure and other uh, things that you provide as, uh, to the citizens of the region. 
So I look forward to working with you. I have, um, and would like, you know, I'll just, if, with your permission, uh, this is a copy of my bio, uh, my experiences, what I've done uh, in general. And if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to contact me on my personal cell, 803-378-5484. And uh, I'd be happy to address any questions or concerns you might have. Report. That is a summary report that I'm going to read from. And it all it basically is is an overview of the services we provided over the last several months, um, starting in December. Um, this report to the St. Matthews Town Council of work completed utilizing allocated funds to New Perspectives Media Association prepared for St. Matthews Town Council, prepared by New Perspectives Media, September 30, 2024. <coughs> the purpose of the report. The purpose of this report is to provide the St. Matthews Town Council with a detailed overview of the work completed using the funds, using the funds provided for video recording and public service announcements. Public service announcement. This report covers the period from 20 from 1231-2023 to the present, outlining the council's meetings, recorded, special events captured, and public service announcements delivered to the community. The council meetings recorded. The next thing I want to say is the council meetings will be recorded and shared uh, with the community for transparency and accessibility of the decision-making process. We believe that it's important that the community know what you guys are doing. Uh, to the extent it's never been recorded before. And we think that that's important. I know you want to share whatever you're doing with your constituents. And to that end, we've been able to cover the Purple Martin Festival, <coughs> the rodeo dance, the line dance, the softball game, the Christmas parade, the firehouse groundbreaking <coughs> ceremony, the firehouse grand opening, and of course, all the schools. We cover all the schools for Calhoun <coughs> County, which is the high school, St. Matthews K through nine, I mean K-8, as well as Sandy Run K-8. We also provided on radio numerous uh, interviews with council members as well as the mayor throughout the course of the year. And that, that goes on at all times. Anytime we catch one of you somewhere, we're going to record you. As well as uh, 25 public service announcements that we've put on radio each and every uh, day whenever you send it. Whenever the office sends it to us, we put that on there. I think we've done a good job. I think it's more exposure that this area has ever had before. We hope we'll be able to continue it in the future. And if there's anything that we haven't done, please let us know so we, we can improve on this area. I don't know if it's a question or, or more of a concern. Um, it's great that these are being recorded and you, you've already addressed the part about um, the recordings being out in a timely manner. I would like to make sure that the citizens know that you know that this information is available because right. if they have to search long sure. and hard for it, then they're not sure. going to. Um, may I ask a question, if I may? Yes. Is there a master list of the emails of the most of the people in Calhoun County? Has the county done? Okay, if there's an emergency, we have the telephone, we have radio, but do we have an email contact? that sends out an email blast to the community. Because what we do, and what we do? Yes. Okay. Yes, we well, here's what, well, if the county does, then that's where we need to put the videos. Exactly. We have no problem with that. So that was a question we didn't have, we didn't ask it before. I wasn't aware of it. But that's the solution to that. All we need to do is have it, submit, because the amount of views that we, the amount of views we get are nowhere what we need. We, and some, some of our views, we have some videos that have 35,000 people to watch it. But because we have a mailing list that we send it out to, and so those people open it. But if we don't have the mailing list to send it to, nobody gets it. So that's what, that would be very helpful, if that's, if, that, if that's possible. And John McLaughlin, I think, was supposed to be here this evening, right? He's coming. Okay. So I'll speak with him about it. And I'm sure he would give us access to it to allow us to do that. It would be that's that's great also, but it would be great if we had um, 
if the name of your YouTube channel, where it can be found, can be put in our newsletter and that kind of thing, and because people can Google it. Okay. Everybody might not check their email, but they will, okay, if they know that this is coming out, okay, let me go to YouTube and find this. So, um, let me want to reach a, a larger audience. A larger audience. Sure. sure. Yeah. Because here's what happens. The, the, Mr. Goldman pointed out the number of people that are coming here. The volume of, of dollars and cents increases because of the number of people that come here. We need to have a way of making sure that business comes here, jobs, opportunities. And the way that they look at us is by the type of videos and information they get. They don't come here to see us, but they will look for us on the video or YouTube somewhere to see how we conduct ourselves. And then that will give them a reason to decide whether I want to move there, whether I want to bring my business there. Is this a viable community? Is this, uh, just a, is this somewhere I want to raise my children? Is this somewhere where we can go to schools? So a part of what we've been doing is helping to sell this community as well and put it in a very good light, positive light. So that's a good suggestion. I promise you, if we're allowed to continue, we will do all those things you ask. And one more question. Right. Sure. <laughs> I don't want to be the only one talking. It's all right. It's all right. Um, how can you ensure that you cover all the events? What, what if um, our town administrator and town clerk get busy? Is there, do you have a system in place where periodically you say, is anything going on this week? You I, know? Well, I often call in and talk to I, I, <laughs> I call in, I, I'm the best, and I also stop by the office. Okay. I stop by and I, 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 I record conversations with the mayor and mm -hmm. with Ms. Warren. And whether you know it or not, all, most people's, I got many people's voices on the radio station. So we've been marketing what we call quiet marketing. Chief of police, I mean the fire chief, his voice is on the radio. Um, so we're always doing something to, uh, to promote this area. Yeah, I just you know. want, you know, make sure that our important events are covered. Maybe make sure you have access to our cal event calendar. That way there's no, no, question. no question about Absolutely. always something going on now. Absolutely. Anyone else? Finished. <laughs> you finished? Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? We certainly need to thank you for coming. Thank you very much. I'm one more way running to uh, to Orangeburg uh, County meeting, city meeting past one day. That is a boxing, and I'm, I'm, this is important. Uh, yeah, a young man named Monty Barrett. He's a world heavyweight boxing champion. He held the title for four years. And he is in the same class weight left as Mike Tyson, who he's a friend of. He's moved here now to our area. He is, it would have been nice that he opened the facilities here right in St. Matthews, but he's opened it in Calhoun County, I mean in Orangeburg County. But it's going to be accessible to our kids, particularly those kids who are marginalized, who need more guidance. Uh, something similar to what they call the Police Athletic League that gets those kids that think they're tough, give them a way out. Yeah. So he's doing it as an after school program and I just wanted to share that with you and I, bring, I want to bring him here at some point, introduce you to him, but he's again, he's a city councilman in Orangeburg right now, presenting to that. Well, and that's why I have to be right. Thank you so much. Yes, thank thank y'all. You can give us. Yes, ma'am. We, we'll receive. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> thank you all very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Terry Parker, but y'all know me as Terry Williams. That's fine. I answer the vote. And I've been meeting with Food Share. Well, first, I'm the Health and Human Services Manager at the library. And I try to bring in resources and things that Calhoun County can use. And I've been working with Food Share before I started at the library. So I'd say about maybe three years now. And I'm hoping. We're hoping and praying that the town will let us use, uh, I think it's the training building, mm -hmm. because we can set up shop there. Now, Food Share is, if you have an EBT card, you can get a box of fruits and vegetables for $5. If mm -hmm. not, on this thing, it tells you that you can get it for uh, 15 If you want a big box, a larger box is 25 And it's all fresh fruits and vegetables. And how we would do it, they would call into the library, talk to me, I would set it up, and they would deliver. We're gonna start, try to start as a site first, not a hub, 
once everything goes through and we get up and running, he said that we could turn into a hub, a much bigger thing. So right now, we'll be taking orders through the library. We might be trying to do it online and get everybody to place the order for whatever boxes they want. Because we have to have the orders first to, you know, before we can move forward, because we have to pay for it, really. So um, I sent you, gave you the information about the SNAP, so you can read up on it. And on the back, it gives you examples of the boxes, the fresh fruits and vegetables that come in the boxes that anyone can purchase. So um, that's one thing I was going to talk about. And then the other thing I'm talking about, with quite a few, um, farmer's market. I had one the second Saturday last month. And I'm going for another one on October 12th, <coughs> second Saturday. And I have 18 vendors so far. And we had a good turnout, even though it was a little yeah, slow with the rain, we had a good turnout. And I've partnered with South Carolina State 1890 and Family Health Centers. And Family Health Centers provide all the tents and tables. So we have food trucks, we have farmers coming in, and other vendors with fresh bread, jewelry, whatever. Anybody that wants to sell, we have people coming in with plants and everything. And so one of the other things I have set up, um, Walk With Ease, that's through DHEC. And that's going to be at John Four Gym starting January 8th for six weeks <coughs> on a Wednesday, 11 to 12.30. It's going to be exercising. And they're going to come down and put us in this exercise class. And so it's good. I mean, you know, you should come. I, I plan to, to go. <laughs> and then the last thing I'm working on right now is a community baby shower. And along with learning resources, I partnered with uh, this lady out of Sumter, and her agency donates the diapers. So I'm trying to get some other agencies involved. It's still a work in progress. So I haven't gotten far, no more than the date. But um, I'm gonna be working on that. And along with some more health fairs, we started off slow when I first started with the health fairs, but I hope to pick up with that and have more agencies involved. Clemson Health, um, the uh, trucks coming, the mobile units, and all of that. So there's a lot that I'm working on that I'm trying to, to bring here to Calvin County. Thank you. Like Ms. Warren said, the issue at the Convalescent Center has been ongoing. Um, we've had to have water systems come out and actually reverse um, the motor to kind of unravel whatever it is that's tied it up, which allows us to pump that wastewater to our wastewater um, treatment plant. They've had to do it more and more and more. Uh, finally, about a month ago, the uh, it's supposed to have two three-phase motors in it, but there was only one that was working. But it was working okay for a long time, but it's worn out. It finally stopped working, so we had to bring in a backup. So right now they have like a grinder pump in there. Um, it started to have issues already, and it's only been in there a month. So in order for the convalescent center to function properly, we have to be able to remove their wastewater. Um, so getting this upgrade, what they're planning to do is to put two pumps in there like it's supposed to be. So if God forbid something happens with one pump, uh, it'll be on a rail system, which is not now. Right now it's bolted to the floor. So the whole design was, was kind of old. Um, but the new system, will uh, put it on a rail system where if a pump goes down, they can take it out, repair it. The other pump will run while that one's getting repaired and then they'll replace it with hopefully a rebuilt pump or a new pump, but it'll continue to run instead of having to rely on only one pump. Because right now they're having to come out at least two or three times a week to fix it, which is constantly costing the time. I got some information today about the smoke alarms. We cannot just hand them out, so we will be signing people up for us to actually come install them. Um, but everything else is the same. Everything's going really good. Party construction, got one or two more items to finish up and we'll be done with them. Um, the department is really looking good. We're, we're so happy over there. Thank y'all so very much for everything y'all did for us, getting us that building and helping with that building. Um, we're back to kind of normal things now, you know, getting things back on track, training, concentrating. I know everybody's seen the cars out there. They're getting ready to go away. 
but we had a great time out there doing extrication training. We had three other departments come over and train with us. The departments that we work, work with on the actual scenes, we had a great training um, at the first of the month. But, uh, so we're, we're back to normal. Um, if you haven't come seen it yet, please come see it. it it's very nice. Thank you all. Thank you.